All right, so yesterday you learned a little bit about uh, electromagnetic induction and how to calculate the magnitude using uh, Faraday's law of induction. Now, we found the magnitude, but not the direction. And just like in a lot of our other things, we, we look at the magnitude of one equation, then we use our mind and some other rules to figure out the direction of things. And it's the same with this. And the, the rule that we use for this is called Lenz's law. It tells us the direction that we use. And we're also going to use our right hand a little bit to, uh, to figure this out like normal. So today I've got for you a, a loop. This is my loop, uh, which we're going to be looking at as a loop of wire. And here we've got a little loop. And one rule that we kind of looked at a little bit was a right-hand rule. And for a loop, you can actually use, uh, maybe we'll call this the third right-hand rule. You take your, your fingers and sort of curve it around the loop in the direction that current is flowing. So if it's flowing around it this way, your thumb points in the direction that the magnetic field would point. So in this case, if current's flowing this way, for me, from looking at it from above, that would be uh, counterclockwise, then your magnetic field would be pointing up. If it was like this, and we had current flowing around it this direction, then the magnetic field would be pointing towards my face. Okay? That's just, again, right-hand rule. This is another way to do it. Now, I'm going to read for you Lenz's Law. Uh, this is one I've got the idea memorized, but not the wording that the, that the book uses. So I'm going to read it from the book here. Uh, this is from page 902 of our textbook. The induced current in a loop is in the direction that creates a magnetic field that opposes the change in magnetic flux through the area enclosed by the loop. It's a lot of words to throw at you all at once, uh, so we're going to explain it in a little more plain terms here in the rest of this video. Uh, if you want to look at that, it's on page 902 of our textbook. And so again, we've got this right here. This is our magnetic or our loop. And if magnetic field through the loop changes as a function of time, there will be a current induced in one direction or the other. And we're going to use the lenses law to figure out that direction. That's the point of today. So let's say, for example, I've got this loop kind of this way, pointing uh, along axis with you. And if I brought a bar magnet, the north end of a magnet over here, and remember from the north end of a magnet, that is where the uh, magnetic field lines point away from. So if this is the north end of a magnet, its field lines are pointing this direction. As I bring it closer to this, more field lines go through the loop. It increases the amount of flux. So as I bring this closer, more flux goes through the loop this way. And Lenz's law says, it's kind of like that Le Chatelier principle or whatever it is in, in chemistry where it, it opposes the change. It does the opposite of whatever's happening to it. So as more field lines go through this loop this way, the loop wants to fight back by creating magnetic field in the other direction. So what you can do is like say, well, more field this way means my field, my field is going to be created in the other direction. So that means that the current is going to flow in this direction around it to oppose that change. Now, if the, magnetic, if the magnet was stationary here, nothing would happen because the field would not be changing. The flux would not be changing. But if we take that, that uh, magnet and pull it away quickly, then we get the opposite change. There was a lot of field going through it. Now there's not very much field, not very much flux going through the loop. So then what happens is it wants to keep it closer to what it was before. So it had a lot of field going through it, and now it's less. So current is induced in this direction instead to create more field through it than there would be otherwise without that flowing current. So this is kind of the idea of Lenz's law. It opposes changes. It does the opposite of what other things did. So we'll talk about just a couple other examples with this. We've got this, uh, this little loop here again. Let's say on this side of my face, there's no, uh, no magnetic field. It's in a region with zero magnetic field. And on this side, there is a strong magnetic field coming towards you, coming out of the screen, okay? So here, no magnetic field. Here, large magnetic field towards you, okay? So as this thing crosses this line, moves into the region with magnetic field, what it's gonna do is have now lots of flux going through it towards you this direction. At the beginning, no flux. This time, now towards you, lots of flux. And so as it crosses that, it's feeling a change in the flux in your direction, and it's going to oppose that by trying to create field in the other direction. And by doing that, it's going to have a current that flows this way around to make a field towards me as it goes across into this field. When it's sitting over here in this, no change, because it's not changing the field through it. And then as we bring it back the other direction, across here, it's now going from a strong, large amount of flux through towards you to no flux through the loop. 
which means that the current is going to flow in such a way to create flux out of the screen towards you in this this direction around it. So that's just a little bit of that. You can also rotate a, a coil inside of a field and that will that will change um, the direction that the current flows as it goes through because it's going to induce some some current as well. I do have one last thing that I want to show you. This is a, uh, a fun little toy that I got this Christmas um, and that I just kind of wanted to show you guys during this unit. So give me just a second for that. Okay, so hopefully you can still hear me. This is uh, a toy that I have. These are two pieces of aluminum. They are uh, cylinders with the, with the center cut out. So you can kind of see those. They stack inside of one another kind of neatly like this. And this is just a, um, a metal ball. Okay, so if I take this, um, this metal ball, and aluminum is non-magnetic, so a magnet wouldn't stick to it. And this actually is not a magnet. This is just a, a metal ball. So if you see me here take this and drop it inside, what you would expect is that it just falls right out the bottom, uh, as you see right there. However, this is a magnet. Uh, this is a very strong neodymium magnet. Uh, and when I drop this inside of here, we get something unique, something kind of surprising that happens here. So watch this. I will drop this in here. There's no slow motion, no trickery going on here. As I let go, it eventually falls through here. Now this is a strong magnet, but aluminum is non-magnetic. It doesn't stick to this. However, when I drop it through, Lenz's law comes into action here. So what's happening is as this falls through, the magnetic field going through this loop, I mean, it's, it's a pretty big loop, but through this loop of metal uh, creates an opposing current that creates an upward opposite magnetic field of the magnet that's falling through it. So it slows it down as it falls through. I'll show you just a little bit of this because I think it's just a really cool uh, thing to watch. And so this thing even, let's see if I can get this to work, you can get it to continuously fall through there. And that is this toy. This is called a, a feel flex because it lets you feel magnetic flex. And one more time just to see the, the difference between these. I've got my magnet and the non-magnet. And now they're stuck together. Anyway, that's what we got for you. There's a few problems that you can take a look at tonight. If you've got questions, please let me know. Uh, see you guys.